All right, so we're recording now. All right, so let's see if we can get rid of that. There we go. So last time uh, we were talking about um, fatherlessness, and that's, you know, I conceptualize that, come on now, as a um, major problem. Lost James. Now he's back. Um, so let me start over. So spiritual father hits the heart of Catholic vision masculinity. The um, fatherless, fatherless is. Oh my gosh. I'm going to try muting you all. Okay, how do you mute? Oh well. So fatherlessness is the the problem in the way I'm looking at it. Um and it's the foundation of uh, society and church and we're in pretty big trouble. We talked about the elephant last time. So we have the elephant in the living room that uh, the fatherless elephants would get aggressive and go on killing sprees. And um, So then we had the two tasks and the two distortions coming out of that. So the two tasks being sexuality and aggression that you need to have self-control for. And um, there's brutality and passivity as the distortions, and we had that as Cain and Abel, or Cain and Adam. And then, so we we're looking at what to do, um, and that's the uh, Catholic vision of, a mas of masculinity, and that's, I see that as um, what, the ability to facilitate building the kingdom, or the um, civilization of love. So we have the four components. We're going to just get to two and a half um, today. Um, so on being families first, um, spiritual fatherhood is the heart and summit is the second. The fundamentals are third. And then the integrated or wise man would be the fourth. So on being family. So we're born into families and um, we have a mother and a father. We may not know them in the physical household, so we've got the physical here uh, and the spiritual up here. Then um, when you get baptized, we add a whole layer of family. Uh, we have two new fathers. You could say the uh, you know, Abba, God the Father, and you could also say Saint Joseph. Um, we also get two new mothers and um, so that's Mary and the church. So, so we can, we can say we can outdo the two mommy crowd, the two daddy crowd, um, with our, with our family that we get when we're baptized. So then, um, you, you might not have a sibling in, um, in your physical family, but when you get baptized, you get 1.2 billion uh, brothers and sisters. Then um, the next step is husbandhood. And when you, you may never get married, but you might, well, when you get baptized, you become a, um, a husband. The men get hus become husbands to the church, the bride of Christ. Um, the girls, uh, women become brides of Christ. Um, and can, I think this is... Can I just ask a quick question? I'm sorry. If everybody sure. just um, on the bottom, if you, if you bring your cursor to the bottom of the screen on the bottom left, you can mute your audio, uh, your, your microphone. Um, if, let's all mute our microphones while Dave's talking because I think that'll help with the breaking up because um, otherwise um, <clears throat> it's too much bandwidth with all of us talking, you know, or background noise and the microphone's turning on and off. So let's just mute that. So, and then, Dave, you have the floor again. I just sort of 
say that for okay. Great. So, so being a husband, I think we do a pretty good job with the girls at First Communion. You know, they get dressed up. They're the bride of Christ. I don't think we do a great job at First Communion for for boys and making it clear that they're now the husband of the bride of Christ to uh, care for that bride. Um, and I think if we had this in place, we could help with a lot of the um, the confusion that we have uh, around being male and gay marriage and um, even same-sex uh, or gender confusion. So that's husbandhood. Then we don't get married in the Catholic Church to not have children. So this is also true uh, on the spiritual side. Um, so like, you know, we don't have children, but, you know, we have I'm still called to be a father, and and that fatherhood uh, is is part and parcel of the identity of being a man. So I have this on the road. This is on a curve thing. So this is it's to represent that it's developmental, um, so that it un it unfolds as you go along. But I think you're born with it. I think it's ontological. I think it's even biological, and um, but it unfolds. So like, a, you know, a two-year-old might, you know, have some loving attendance toward or, you know, attention toward a baby. So that's them being a spiritual father. Um, and then when I was at a, a church with a um, school in it, I would watch the kids. There's like fifth and sixth graders shepherd the first graders at mass. So, um so it's it's a possibility that you can be a spiritual father without being a biological father and starting very young. So that's on being family. Then we're going to zoom into spiritual fatherhood as the heart and summit. So in it, I would say it's lived out in chivalry as priest, prophet, and king. And we're just going to get to the chivalry side. But let's talk about spiritual fatherhood. So, um, so what is it? So it does get personal for me, you know. A lot of people have talked about being called to fatherhood and, um, you know, without having children, where does that leave me? Um, we've developed it for priests and religious pretty well, um, although that's just, it's just researched in the last 20 years. Um, and I think it's the summit. It's the, if you want to use Aquinas' language, it's the perfection of being masculine. It's the ultimate purpose. Um, and I think it's simply a heroic call to live the gospel. So the Israelites and even James in the New Testament says, you know, we have to take care of the widows and the orphans. So it's pretty uh, pretty clear that the fatherless need to be taken care of. Um, and Jesus expands it to all the vulnerable when he says, do it, you know, when you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. And I think it includes your neighbor, if you want to go to um, Mr. Rogers, and, and his, you know, won't you be my neighbor? Um, and then finally, there's the Great Commission. That's go and baptize and make disciples of all nations. Um, that's that's having spiritual children, and I think that's that's the that's the version of be fruitful and multiply. For, for the church. So how do we live it out? I think in its simplest form, it's, it's simply the cor corporal works, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. Um, so then a question is, is it a universal call? And, and I think it is. So we start here um, at the center of this, we've got married, um, men, we've got single men, we've got uh, children, and no children. And then it moves out into priest, prophet, and king. And then you have spiritual children in the spiritual household. So there are four roads here. So you have to, um, you can be single, never been married or an annulled marriage. And then you can have children or no children. And then you can be married or divorced with no annulment. And you can have children or no children. So this covers all men in all states of life. And um, 
when people are writing about masculinity, they tend to focus on fathers or, or you know, priests or, you know, it's a very uh, sectioned off. So I think we need to have a more comprehensive thing. So I think fatherhood is chivalry. And um, we'll, we'll take a look at this more in depth. Um, and let's zoom in on it. We're going to use um, this guy, C.S. Lewis, um, his conception of chivalry. Um, let's see. So it's not it's not a romantic behavior. It's not um, it's not a code. It's the virtue of chivalry that we're going to use here. Um, so why chivalry? Well, it's going to address our two tasks and our two distortions. Um, so it's going to you know, help with self-control of sexuality and aggression, and it will help with the brutality and the passivity problem. So let's unpack this. So meekness is the first of the three. Um, there's meekness, valor, and sacrifice. So meekness, well, let's talk about virtue first. So virtue is always done from the middle or the mean. Um, so if you have honesty if you're too honest you're just a jerk if you're if you're not honest enough then um you're a liar or you know in our lingo you're codependent you can't say no um but the virtues of chivalry are going to be done in the extreme but then you're going to have a, a context that defines when to do them so we need um meekness when we're off the battlefield. And meekness isn't weakness, it's having the power and not using it. So you, um, you wanna create a safe place for, um, for men, you wanna create a safe place for women and children and the vulnerable. So then um, you've got valor. And valor is courage, and it's essential on the battlefield. You do not want somebody who is being meek on the battlefield. Um, valor uses its power to protect, and it creates, you can say it creates, or at least, um, a th well, it creates a threat, or it at least protects um, the you know, the, uh, the in-group. Well, it, so it, it creates a threat for the out-group or the enemy. Then these two are tied together by sacrifice. And um, so if you're going to be meek, you're, you may lay down your, your reputation or uh, you give away some of your power. That's a sacrifice. Um, if you're going to be valorous on the battlefield, you may literally lay down your life or it could be, again, your reputation. And, and then in the everyday world, it's competition. Um, that's, that's where uh, chivalry can come through. So clinically, you need to help men define who's your enemy. So this is not going to be your wife and kids. And, and, and this is where we can tie in, you know, the, the physiology of virtue or the adult self and child self stuff. The, um, if you're acting out of your fear brain, then um, the wrong people are becoming the enemy. So who is the enemy? So it could be people, systems, organizations that use or threaten the dignity of the human person. Um, it could also be fear, sin, evil, and death. Um, so, um, you might have to train men to, to increase their safety so that they don't see, they can calm their brain down, go back to their adult self and, and not, um, not treat others like the enemy. So with, um, with chivalry, the context is really critical. So, um, you've got Meekness is a virtue off the battlefield. You can see that here. And then um, valor 
is needed on the battlefield and then sacrifice ties these two together. So here's our, our two tasks and two distortions. So meekness will help with the sexuality and the aggression and brutality and valor, uh, right order sexuality and aggression in the proper places, and then also is an antidote for passivity. So um, Lewis used the uh, RAF pilots as a um, example of chivalry. These guys were tremendously courageous. They would last about 87 hours in the, in the cockpit. And the way the planes were set up, where the engine was, they, they'd usually burn up in the cockpit if they got hit. So they were tremendously respected in the, in the military. And then these guys would get on the ground and they were, they were the, the meekest bunch of guys. So women loved being around them because they weren't out to use them. Um, you know, and try to hit on them. So chivalry then is these three virtues tied together, meekness, valor, and um, sacrifice. So um, this is the way I would represent it, um, zoomed in on fatherhood. We're going to take a look next time, the priest, prophet, and king. So what do you guys think? Does it make sense? Got questions? Yep. Yeah, uh, first of all, I mean, really, I really love how all the pieces fit together. Um, the 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 first thing, and this is something I've, I've thought about before, but I, I like the way that you're presenting it. You know, I I think that we all have a tendency, or I, I used to have a tendency to think of spiritual fatherhood as uh, like a parallel path to biological fatherhood uh, or, or spiritual parenthood as an alternative to biological parenthood. And um, I've just recently, and you emphasize this here, I kind of have come to realize that the spiritual parenthood is uh, sort of the, the, the source from which natural parenthood flows, that, that we are all, uh, as part of our basic humanity, our basic masculinity or fem uh, femininity, um, called to be spiritual parents. Firstly, you, you emphasize that, for example, when you talk about the fifth and sixth graders, uh, you know, shepherding the, the, the littler kids, you know, the, the, that, that call to be nurturing and self-donative in that way of protecting and nurturing uh, others is, is sort of integral to our uh, call to be human. Uh, and then any biological parenthood flows out of that. So it's not an alternate path or a, uh, uh, a separate path, um, spiritual parenthood that is, uh, but it's, it's the source for all nurturance and, and, and in particular the biological nurturance and biological parenting. So, so, I, I, so I, I, I like that you emphasize that uh, and I'd even bring it out a little bit more. If, 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 first of all, do you, do, you, do you agree with what I'm saying? I mean, it, does it... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, you could say that, um, and this is Monsignor Esif, who said that all love comes from fatherhood, and and it comes from God, the Father. So, so it's it, it flows from the Trinity, you know, into us um, and out. And then and then it's it's being an intentional disciple. It's being a disciple. Period. So. And I think I think that that. If, you know, uh, this is a little tangential, but um, clinically, you know, this is really helpful for, for folks who are struggling with infertility who tend to, to frame, you know, their, their lives as either I am a parent or I'm not a parent uh, instead of asking, you know, how, how can I be a parent? You know, what, how can I exercise my parenthood? Um, Wow. How can I exercise my parenthood um, in, right in the here and now instead mm -hmm. of you know, I can only be a parent if we conceive or, you know, and, and being able to kind of talk through that as, as, as not a, 
somehow inferior vocation. Um, but but the source of the vocation of parenthood, I think that that's really important. Right, right. Um, I don't want to monopolize things, but I did have uh, two other one, one one other observation and a question. Uh, the uh, the the second thing was meekness. Um, I don't know if, I, I think this would fit pretty easily into your model, but I thought it, when I was doing Bedanitudes and I, I talked about blessed are the meek, um, I learned that, that uh, in Greek, the word for, for meek is praus, and, what it, and, and it was a word that was used to describe a well-trained war horse who, who, wouldn't, who wouldn't spook easily in battle. Um, so it, it's a, it's a it basically it's a it's not a you know it's, as opposed to passivity, it's a sort of, it's it's a it's a spirit of a sort of attentive waiting on the on the commands of the master that ability to respond immediately to what the rider if you will the master is is asking the horse to do, uh, and so you know when in battle, uh, you know it, it you're engaged but when you're when you're not in battle, you're, you're still attentive uh, and you're, you, sir, you're submitting yourself to the will of the Father uh, and, and, and ready to respond to his commands at a moment's notice. Um, I, I don't know if, if you wanted to fit that in there, but I thought that that, that would tie in uh, several of the concepts that you mentioned and, and, and tie it into the, the beatitude, blessed are the meek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's interesting because um, the, way, the way I'm framing it in the way I think Lewis and, and this stuff's I got exposed to this through Rick Cross. Um, but, um, you know, that's even saying meekness is necessary on the battlefield, which is a, which is an interesting twist to it. You know, cause I was saying you don't want somebody who's meek on the battlefield, you know, and, and in a sense that's true. If you, if you have the power to, you know, hurt somebody or kill somebody and you need to, um, then, and you're not doing it, then that's not good. But you're saying, you know, even a well-trained battle horse doesn't get spooked during battle. So I, I like that. It's, you know, yeah, and, 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 you know, and able to respond to those commands. So I think that that helps tease, the, tease it out a little bit, the, the difference between meekness and passivity, too. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, right. it, even when I'm not in battle, I still am uh, in possession of all of my power, and I can right. use it you know, however my master commands uh, in any moment. Uh, is that kind of a form of temperance? Yeah, we, yeah. That makes sense. That would be related. There, th I have another slide somewhere where it, there's all these, um, what, associated virtues with these. And there's, you know, there's like six and eight on, on both of these. So um, I'll send that around later, but I guess you're right. And then my last, uh, it was just a question. When you talk about the tasks of sexuality and aggression, why do you, wh why tasks? And, uh, that, that word confused me a little bit. I mean, I get what you're trying to say. I think like it's a, they're sort of expressions of self, or, you know, to, to flesh that out a little bit more for me. Okay. So, so it's a task for society and the family to develop in young men um, this self-control in these two areas. So, so the task is for society and families um, to to tame it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. It sounded like you were saying that sexuality and aggression were the tasks. So I misunderstood. Yes. That. Right. Right. No. No. And that's the way I said it last time. I, I did say it a little differently. Okay. Um, that's a good point. Okay. That, that's all I had. But the, the really, um, I really love it. It's 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 really great stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd like, right. you know, and, and when we get through it all, I'd, I'd like to maybe talk about how you use it, you know, in sessions. Uh, maybe you can give a couple of case examples, uh, uh, right. that sort of thing. But I, I, I really like what you're doing here. This is this is really good. So, and I love I love the idea of chivalry um, being defined as as sacrifice, meekness, and valor, you know, as a construct for those qualities. I think that's really neat. Anybody else? Yeah. I was just going to say that I, I really like it too. And um, two things. One is, Greg, I appreciate you pulling out that piece about meekness because I was thinking as I was listening that um, potentially it could be a situation where 
that sense for men that it's that passivity. And the other thing um, that I was thinking is just that uh, I love how it's, how you've made it so very concrete, um, Dave, uh, and really make it clear, uh, because I would say in my experience that the more clear we can spell it out exactly, the better uh, the men are able to sort of take it and go forward. So I, I think it's just great. I appreciate it very much. Good. Yeah, I've tried to make it simple. I mean, it's not simplistic, that's for sure. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, that, I mean, the son, brotherhood, fatherhood, you know, husbandhood stuff is everybody's experience. You know, everybody has something like that. And, um, and then, you know, fatherhood defined as uh, sacrifice, meekness, and valor, well, as chivalry. And then um, we're going to layer in priest, prophet, and king with the same triangle. Um, and, you know, it could get complex because you could say, you know, there's a, a, an expression of chivalry with son being a son. There's an expression with brother, father, and husband. And, um, but I just stuck it all in the fatherhood because I keep it a little more simple. What's your other guys? I think I think that this this idea of chivalry and putting it, you know, this triangle kind of idea, it, it's going to give it's going to give a different way of looking at what you're supposed to do as a man for some for some of the guys that I work with, you know, they they think about it as a, you know, being a good husband or being a good father somehow threatens them. Like I can't do, you know, I can't do what I want. I have to sacrifice all the time. And I think this is, this is not nicely balanced and it will be a, more appealing than just, well, you're just supposed to be self donative and do, you know, that. So, so it gives it a good, I like it because I think it gives it a good balance. Where would you fit that, that tendency to um, see sacrifice as, uh, you know, losing the self and you know, not getting to do what I want. I, where would you fit that distortion in your schema? Um, so we'll get to distortions um, next time. But um, with with well, so the whole the whole thing, the the Abba prayer for men is outlined in two two major categories. First, you have to be loved, and um, so you have to know your identity. That's remembering who you are. And if you, and sin is basically forgetting who you are. And then the other side is challenge. Um, so, so if you're, well, once, once you're baptized, once you're a disciple, then, you know, you need to lay down your life. You pick up your cross, you um, love your enemies. You know, that's where the sacrifice is. Um, and you get families who are more, what? Um, well, when we get the head, heart, and hands, they're more heart-oriented. They're more indulgent, you know, and they don't have any expectations or challenges. So that's a distortion on that side. Then, then uh, if you're too much on the challenge side, then uh, you know, the, the kids are kids never feel like they're loved, and and they're. They're, you know, it's just they're working for love, and they're they're never good enough. Um, so, so the the sacrifice I think comes in after your love. It is sequential. You know, we love because he first loved us. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, there, no, that, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, got about five minutes before I have to jump off. Anybody else? Uh, any comments or? Questions? How about you, Josh? There's a new father, new father there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not putting you. I'm not putting you in the spotlight. I'm just, I'm just teasing you a little bit. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> I, I think it's one of the things I like is that, um, uh, like you're saying, Greg, even if like a, say you got a new young couple and they get pregnant and then they start looking up all the parenting books and all right, how do you do this? 
this is saying, no, you, you can learn how to be a father and preferably you should be uh, before you even conceive. So it can be a formative thing right from the start, even prior to marriage, of course. Uh, so you, you don't have to wait to conception to figure out fatherhood. Um, but I, I think this is, is able to apply it a lot more broadly. That's a great point. Yes, because this is part of our identity. And, mm -hmm. and it needs to be developed and formed as you go along. And, and you, you know, you'd have to have spiritual fathers or a good father. Um, well, your, your own biological father can be your spiritual father. Um, but if that's not working, then, then we need to, to mentor other young boys and, and men into this. And, you know, this is who we are. Um, you know, one thing I don't talk about too much, but, you know, women tend to, you know, their bodies define more who they are, you know, being a mother. Um, and then if you get, you know, if mom's part of, you know, doing the household thing, um, doing the home thing and dad's out working then then girls get to spend a lot of time around their mothers to see what that how to do that um and and boys don't get that as much and, and that's where we need to do this spiritual fatherhood stuff um so i don't know what point was i making so so it it does need to be you know like here's who we are um and this is part of our identity but I like that point. I hadn't thought about it. You know, like you don't have to wait to have kids to sort of learn how to be a father. So that's great. Yeah. That. Well, yeah. And, and I, I think that that's one of the things that, you know, you sort of alluded to it when you talked about, um, or in the earlier part of the thing, and, and when and my comments about, you know, spirit, spiritual fatherhood being the, the source of all, you know, fatherhood or spiritual parenthood being, I, I think that, that, you know, what Josh is saying there, I, I would really encourage you to bring that out a little bit more in the early part of the talk to be able to say, you know, that this, that this parenthood is for, for men, fatherhood is, is, is essential to our identity and it's expressed, you know, before we have children and, and, uh, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's essential to who we are. I, I, I everything you're saying right now, right? I think bringing that out up front would be really, really helpful. So, okay. And I don't know if this fits in at all or not, but what popped into my head as you were saying about women, women's bodies kind of, um, it's more about that that's more um, revealing about who they are it's uh, the thing that popped into my head is is the act of procreation for men is pleasurable where the act of procreation you know with the sex act but the act of procreation for women is the sex act and then birth so we have that we have that maybe more balanced perception of what being a parent is than, right. than men have that makes sense? Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's what I was trying to say, that, that women are, the, the roles for motherhood is more biologically defined than right. for men. And, right. And, and there's, there is that, you know, pleasurable donation, and that's it. Right. <laughs> and then women, women, you know, carry that in their bodies. And, you know, you have a, a monthly reminder of your fertility. And so, so it's much more grounded in, in the biology than, than for men. And so that leaves, that leaves fatherhood more culturally defined. Mm -hmm. And, and then, so if, and, and it's amazing what's out there, you know, teaching kids going through, you know, kindergarten on up, you know, they're, they're trying to redefine biology and, and, and sexuality and, and family and they they've got a program to do it and so this th this kind of thing i think needs to go out there to counter this stuff and this stuff is more tied with reality than what they're talking about really really good stuff i gotta jump off but this was this was terrific um so we want to continue this uh, in the next meeting dave do you want to do that then or yeah we'll that's pick, fine pick up where we left off here um, thank you, everybody. Uh, listen, if you, uh, who, who needs, before we go, uh, I have, uh, in terms of needing referrals, I have Karen, I have you, and I have James. Does anybody else need referrals? I can take a couple. Judy and who, who else? I could take a couple, Josh. Oh, Josh, okay. But it's not, not urgent. Okay. All right, good, good to know. 
All right, then. Um, great job, Dave. Thank you very much. And okay. uh, God bless everybody. Uh, have a great weekend. And uh, you, know, you know where to find me if you need me for anything. All right. God bless everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.